Hi everyone, uh, it's Ajay Aritopa here. Thank you for joining today. Um, I see there's a couple more joining, um, but we can we can get started. Um, so today's Beckler's webinar uh, for this month is all around Vicada, um, a, a, a leading um, CCTV, smarter CCTV solution that uh, we are we are quite excited to show you today because. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to show you the demo and it's, it's going to be quite fantastic. But um, before we get started, I'll just uh, go through the, the usual ground rules in terms of questions. If you have any questions, um, please put them in the chat and then we can cover them off in a bit of a Q&A after. Um, and if there's anything we can't answer, of course, we'll cover off um, at the end or I can cover off in the next actions. For our host today, though, we are joined by Trent Matchett, uh, who is uh, the Channel Sales Manager at Vicada. Um, although he looks very a little bit younger, Trent, in this photo than, than his <laughs> usual ones that I've seen recently. But, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, Trent's going to cover off um, everything everything Vicada, and, and we can talk about our relationship um, in a little bit as well. Um, and in terms of an agenda, in terms of to, to just lay out the format for today, so we are going to give you a quick introduction to Picard, and we'll, we'll try and keep this short because really we want to show you the technology, um, and, and we feel like that's going to give you the best understanding of the technology as well. But we're going to give you a bit of an intro. We're going to show um, from a digital transformation side in terms of what's got us to smarter CCTV now, and the kind of the requirements and the people that need to be brought into it for it to kind of really work, and then also look at where a lot of our customers are now from a traditional CCTV standpoint, and then how you would look at Bacard and how that can actually benefit your business going forward. I appreciate, you know, don't want to rub too much into the into the COVID world, but, you know, the world has changed. However, um, it's good that we reflect the office space correctly against that now. But of course, this is, we're going to keep that short and go straight into the product demonstration to show you guys as well. So on that note, I'm going to hand over to Trent um, to, to take it from there. Thanks, AJ. Very much appreciated. Um, so, yeah, Vicada, we're a, 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 at the very heart of it, we're a technology company. We're, very, we're purely focused on physical security. So when I talk to our um, CEO, he talks about the goal of the company being around protecting or creating a modern enterprise physical security system. But he summarizes that by saying we want to protect people, um, we want to protect their assets, and we want to protect their privacy. Now, we're going to talk mainly today about CCTV, but obviously Vicada is looking at access control, um, environmental sensors, and everything we do follows the same vision. We're looking to be a secure platform, so both physical and from a cyber perspective. We're looking at a scalable platform, so whether you've got one location, 10 locations, multinational number of locations, or five cameras, 500 cameras, we're looking at a scalable platform and everything we do has to embrace tech. So it has to be able to get the automatic firmware, automatic software updates, so you can have the best AI applications inbuilt into your system. Our investors are a big part of who we are. They meant that we've been able to grow. We started in 2016 um, through to today. We've been able to attract the, be um, the best and sort of brightest engineering mindsets and effectively take a product and expand it exponentially over the last four years. And that will continue for the next 10, 20, 30 years. Um, literally, as AJ said, we're talking about digital transformation. So you've probably gone through some sort of digital transformation, whether it be the way that you communicate on email platforms or um, Slack channels, et cetera, or whether it be your applications. And a lot of what you've done is more, is more than likely been based around the cloud. And Vicada has a real vision. We're really incorporating the cloud. Our platform, our architecture is built around cloud access, which allows you to centrally manage. Now, whether that's centrally managed in regards to where it's located, so you can see your offices, see your factory, see your environments, whether you're based at home, whether you're based on the other side of the world, um, allow access to multiple departments and do that all from a central location. Now, Vicada has also seen a slight change in who is buying physical security products. Traditionally, it's been the facilities, it's been the security managers, and we're very much catering to that person. But we're also seeing on the left-hand side of your screen there, the IT buyer coming in, and we're solving a whole bunch of problems that have been sort of put on to that department within an organization. Furthermore, the CXOs, the directors, the owners of the company, they want to be more engaged in what they're buying. No longer is CCTV just a, a mechanism for recording footage or looking at the office. They want a better return on investment. They want to use some of the features. They want to be able to see what's happening when they're within their offices. So we summarize this and pull all these stakeholders together. And it's a sort of a rough summary of the different stakeholders. But we know we noticed that customers want a usable model 
modern system. They want something that's secure and scalable, and they also want instant access um, to the right departments or to multiple different departments. And what that means is we need a cloud managed solution. We need something that has automatic updates. We need an interface that is simple and easy to use. So for the person who uses it every day, or maybe the person who uses it once a month or once every six months. And ultimately, because of the world we live in, we need it to be secure by design. So I mean secure from a cyber perspective by design. Now, as AJ said, the best way to look at how Vicata operates is to compare us to what you might have in your traditional system. And this is a sort of an NVR system, so a network video recording system. And this has pretty much been the, the staple for the last 20 years. Great technology in 2001, but now with the sort of emergence, we're in 2020, it's time to move forward. It's time to embrace the cloud and do things differently. To sort of summarize this system, you'll have a few cameras that go into a switch. And typically what you'll be using today is you'll have an NVR or a server that holds all the footage within your organization. And it's more than likely that you're managing it on premise. All your IT departments set up some sort of VPN funnel. There are a range of different restrictions that are associated with this type of solution, whether it's the amount of footage you have, whether it's the scalability, or whether it's the cyber risk that you have by opening up those VPN tunnels or not maintain or not having the ability to maintain them as best you can. The way that Vicada flips that on the head, using our cameras and our software, we, the camera is the solid state storage device. So the camera holds the footage. You're connecting the camera over PoE typically into your IT and straight into the cloud. And from the cloud using your web browser or our native app for iOS or Android, you're managing your, your solution. From a security standpoint, the footage is encrypted both at rest and in transit. You're only opening up port 443 and 123. And then when you're accessing the management console, it can be an extension of your already existing security um, credentials. So single sign-on policies, multi-factor authentication, um, or mobile device management. Now, from a bandwidth perspective, you're looking at um, the footage being held on the camera. And then every sort of 10, 20 seconds, it's sending thumbnails or metadata to the cloud which is around 20 kilobits per second, meaning we are the most bandwidth friendly solution on, um, on the market. But ultimately, we've been in the UK for a year. We're closing in probably on about 140 customers. I know it says 100 there, but we're, we're exponentially growing every day. Globally, we've got 4,000 plus customers. And I encourage you to speak to your, um, your Beckler the rep and, and see what case studies we have available that sort of align to yourself. So whether it be in education, retail, um, government, we've got three NHS institutes, um, trusts I should say, that have taken on the Vicata solution. Um, no matter where you are, I'm sure we can sign up and line up some use cases that are associated to you. But I wanna dive in, as AJ said, and spend most of my time looking at the actual product. So excuse me as I sort of make a slight transition. And hopefully you can all see what I'm looking at here. And you notice that I've dived straight into our, my, my web browser and I've come into the Vicata commands. This is our central management platform. The first screen I'm showing you now is a sort of holistic view. So this is our live camera system for the Vicata offices. So I'm first of all getting a, an integrated global map and I can see that we've got about 107 odd cameras around the world and I can see where they're all located. I could summarize the health of my cameras by just ducking into my camera tab on the navigation pane on the left and see there's 106 cameras actually in total. One of them is, is new and hasn't been associated with it, but actually I can see here that two of them are offline. Now I can instantly see that I've got two cameras offline. You'd be surprised how many customers, how many companies don't realize a camera is offline until they've had an incident and they've gone to see the footage and then realize that camera has been broken for two, three, four weeks. Yeah. And then I can see all the cameras I've got online as well. Now I can divide that up and go into my sites and integrate that with a map as well. So if I can tick down here, I can look at our HQ and see that our HQ is located in, in San Mateo as I suggested before. I can scroll down, um, look at London and see that my London cameras, as the name would suggest, is located in London. But I wanna go back into my, my HQ site here and look at the floor plan as well. So I'm gonna dive a bit closer in. I'm gonna get a bit closer right down to the sort of street level and see the number of cameras. Now we've probably got more cameras than we need, but they're ours. So we deploy them. We almost deploy them at will. 
here I can see that one of those cameras is offline because it's that amber color. Now remember our tech, it's our, it's our hardware and our software. So there's a couple of reasons the camera might be offline. One, it may be attacked. So each camera is built with an accelerometer, meaning that if it's hit with an accelerated force, you're going to get an alert. The second is their machine learning cameras. So if um, if someone puts a partition or spray paints them, you're going to get an occlusion alert. And the third and probably more common is if there's a networking issue, someone's cut the cable, there's a power outage, you're going to get an alert to go and sort that camera out. You can integrate the cameras with a floor plan, is what you're seeing right here. And you can see all these green dots with the directional hue, and I can dive in and look at that particular footage. And if I go to my second floor where we've turned on some analytics, just by clicking on the top, you're going to get some live analytics. Now, this is our um, our HQ in California, so West Coast um, USA. So it's very early in the morning. But if it was a bit later in the day, you, you'd see some live motion. So the screen would go from blue to red as it, as it populates around. But because I'm diving in at the end of the day, I might look at the people heat map. And the people heat map is going to give me a, a sort of a zoned green area of where the most foot traffic is happening. And we turn that on for the common area. So it's just this sort of top L shape here. I'm gonna take a, an, an eight hour view. I'm gonna look at yesterday, select that, and see actually from, and let's scroll that down from about nine through to five, where were the hotspots within my office? Not surprisingly, it was in the lift. Maybe a little bit more surprisingly, it was in this auditorium area here as well. So you can see that and the use cases we're seeing around the market, around retail, um, where to put the best uh, cameras, uh, sorry, the best advertisement. It's around COVID notifications, where we need to look at social distancing signs. Um, it's almost an endless. I can also dive into the cameras. And the first thing I'm gonna see by diving into this sort of front door camera is a live feed here. So I'm seeing a live feed. Now, by the way, I'm sat in the Cotswolds. Um, I'm not in my office today for obvious reasons, but uh, I'm sat in the Cotswolds getting a live feed from the west coast of USA with, within a couple of simple clicks. Now, if I scroll down, I talked about thumbnails and metadata that are being sent to the cloud. And here we've seen them. So I can scroll back and forth across the thumbnails for this camera to find historic footage. And yes, these little blue dots down the bottom are where it's, it's discovered a person. Now a 24 hour thumbnail for a, uh, a front door camera with a high traffic area is probably not the best. So I can isolate that down to whatever size thumbnails I want. So let me select four hours. And now I can see I've got different thumbnails for different points of the day. So if something happened, say last night between 4 a.m. And, and, and 8 a.m., I can easily scroll back and forth and look for that footage. I can take that a little bit of a step further. I love a, a slow loading um, live webinar. Let me just change that to standard definition. Um, I can take that a step further and I can actually highlight an area. So if I'm looking for something, an incident that happened at the front door, I highlight that front door and the thumbnails down below are gonna change into where it's detected motion in that highlighted zone. Now, there's a bit of wind blowing, so those trees might move there. So I'm actually gonna filter that to people. So now what I'm getting is all thumbnails where it's filtered the motion of a person coming in and out of the office. Now, this one here is the one that looks a little bit dodgy, I'd say, because there's a few people. So let me dive into that clip. Now, this is the first time I'm actually extracting footage from, from the camera. Sorry, I'm getting a bit... Uh, trigger happy with my mouse. This is the first time I'm extracting footage from the camera itself, right? And what I can't see here is, is I can't actually understand exactly what's happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this button at the top here. Now I've named my cam the cameras have been named quite quite well. So by typing in front, I can look at the front lobby. And what I'm going to have here is a simultaneous view of, of this footage and it's going to sync it up. So when I press play, I'm going to get the exact view and I can see exactly what's happened. Now here, if this was an incident, there's a couple of other things I can do. I can take some snapshots. I can press this button here, which is your archive. So remembering that the footage is held on the camera, when you find an incident, when someone falls over, when there's something stolen and you find the clips, you can take an archive and extract that footage or take a, a copy of that footage and put it into your Vicata cloud. So you put some notes, so front door incident, whatever you want to write. You could blur the faces and if you blur faces, it'll actually take two copies. It'll take one with blurred faces and one without. And it'll put that into your Vicada, so secure, cloud repository. So no longer you have to worry about how many archive clips you have, no longer you have to worry about keeping footage for a certain amount of time or adding different NBRs onto your unit. You simply have an unlimited amount and you can archive as many clips as you like and keep it with Vicata for as long as you like.
So that's finding footage if you roughly know the area and the time. Let me take another example. I'm just going to dive into, let's say, the second floor, so an internal camera. Let's take it a step further and say, look, we've just had a, recall, uh, a call that someone's on the second floor. So I've just dived into a second floor corridor camera here. They're saying, look, it's, it's someone dodgy uh, who's wearing a red shirt. We don't know who it is. So if I click on this people button here, the first thing I'm going to get is all the faces that this camera has detected. And I can dive in and see all those faces. And it's changed the thumbnail view to um, thumbnails of individual people. Now, the person we had was a, a person wearing a red shirt that appeared to be male. Um, I apply those filters and the technology is going to skim all the thumbnails and try and give me the best matches. And I can scroll down and look at, okay, so who was the individual? Where were they? Is it, was it this person? Was it someone else? Um, and you can keep going through all those footage until you find who you're after. Um, I'm going to click this one because this is, you know, he was, he had his hands in his pockets um, and he was diving in. And I can see him looking a little bit, a little bit precarious walking through. And I can actually clip in here and I might actually pause it at that point. I'm going to dive in and say, yeah, this is definitely the individual. So I'm just going to dive in and using the snapshot button here, I'm just going to take a snapshot of his face. And let me get out and show you a different search function. So what I can do, if I know the individual I'm after, I can either do as I've just done, is take a snapshot and upload it for this, this camera, or I could go in and search at the top here, and this is searching my whole estate. I can put his photo up into the, up into the whole estate, and now I'm searching across all my cameras for a match on this individual. Now it's found him regardless of the fact that he's wearing a face mask because it's picking up enough of his face to be detected. I can see that he wears his face mask most of the time apart from when he you know, is having a bit of food. I can also look at where he's been around my office. He's been in the kitchen, he's been on the second floor. And, if it, and as it keeps loading up, I'll be able to determine where he's been, uh, what days he's been in the office as well. So I can see that he was here on Tuesday and he was wearing a black top and a hoodie. Actually, I just figured out that this is Nate. He's our, he's our trainer within the, within the Vicata office and there's nothing dodgy about him at all. Now, remembering that all these clips I can dive in and, and archive as well. I could, you now if Nate was a little bit dodgy, I could actually add him to a notification to learn and add him to a person of interest. Now, a person of interest alert means that any time that, that Nate shows up within our, offer, um, within our office, whether it be in the US, the London, Sydney, uh, Germany, you're going to get a proactive notification saying, Nate's on premise, um, here's a clip of it, you need to sort that out. So think about dismissed employees. Um, think about uh, kids that have been expelled. Um, known troublemakers, or on the flip side, think about your executive team and the fact that you might want to know if they suddenly show up at your front door. Um, that same search functionality, by the way, looking at people, has been extended into vehicles. Uh, I might actually dive into our London cameras because they're exterior. So this is Great Eastern Street in London. So I'm going to dive into, say, this one here. Um, and look for a particular vehicle. So it picks up lots of vehicles. So normally this would be maybe for a car parking um, example, but because we're in the UK, I wanna use a London. But you'll notice here, because this camera is picking up different vehicles, it's got this vehicle tab here. So I'm gonna click on vehicles. And now that the thumbnails below have been determined by vehicles. Now, if you're looking for a descriptive car, so if you're looking for a red car, you can press red. If you're looking for an orange and so on and so on so forth. But then we've even worked with the Nissan team and looked at the makes of cars. Now, this is preloaded. So if I type in S, you'll see that Seat and Skoda are there. But I might see if we've found any Bentleys because, you know, the bankers are supposed to be in lockdown. We'll see if any of them are working at the moment. If I type that in, we're going to get different thumbnails and actually it's the same car every day so someone definitely is traveling to and from work um, we're going to get all the Bentleys coming through and again you can dive into those clips and archive them the archive repository is on the left hand side here so this is where you can see all your archive clips and you can filter them by the date they've been made or by the date of the footage um, or even the camera name and if I dive into one of these clips and I'm just going to press play um, whilst it's loading up on the right hand side you see you can delete this footage um, I can write it, um, different notes like sent to police um, I could download it to mp4 or I can actually as I've just written a note saying sent to police I could share the footage so no longer do you have to worry about downloading and sending reverse round trips couriers I can instantly share this clip 
via the um, SMS, email or link, and I can do it for a defined period of time. So I can do it for a day, a week, I can customise it for maybe a year, so 52 weeks. Um, send it to the police, I can give them full access or just restricted view only access. And at the time that that's expired, I can, uh, they will no longer have access or I can manage that link and revoke it at any time. Saving heaps of time, saving heaps of hassle and making it a more secure solution for your organisation. The other thing to note is it is watermarked, so admittable in court. Um, now, that's finding footage, saving that footage for further use and sharing it with the proper, proper, proper people, either inside your organisation or outside your organisation. The cameras are also enabled us to do some more proactive things as well. So if, again, if I dive back to those London cameras, and this is a, a real example. Um, and if I look at this camera here, this actually happened a few months ago. Um, I dive a bit further. There's a, an ATM machine. There was an, actually a fire up here. And then we rang the fire department. They already knew about it, funnily enough. It's on Great Eastern Street. There's lots of examples. But what we said is, OK, can you just give us the, um, the mobile number of the attending fire person? And they said, oh, why? And we said, we could send them the clip instantly. So we did. We literally took their phone number. We gave them a day's worth of access. We put in, um, obviously, it was a UK number. We put their name, jotted their phone number in and then sent it to them. And they instantly had that footage available to them as they were driving towards the scene. I mean, we can embed that into a website if we so, so desired. And if I go back to that, that site, that London site, I could share not just one camera, as I could instantly use that same tool and share multiple cameras. So share a whole subsite if I so desired. Now you'll notice here whilst I'm on this page that I can only share certain subsites. That's because you can make the access as granular as you need to be. So if I'm if I was to say site manager for London, you give me access to just London. I don't need to view or manage or look after the cameras in in um, in the US because I've got nothing to do with that offer. So you can make you can give as many people access to this tool as needed, but you can also make it as granular and as as restricted as you need as well. There's a couple of other things I'm just going to dive in that we do proactively within the system. So let me just go into a kitchen camera as well. I'm just going to choose this one. Um, and these are the alerts around the kitchen camera. So if you think about this space, I'm just going to look at the settings within this camera. I'm going to dive in here and just show you how simple it is to set up different things. Now, the first of all, if you look about, think about this space and you think about COVID, I know AJ didn't want us to harp on it and I don't think we should, but if you think about this and say, look, you can only really have two people in there at any given time that can be socially distanced. So if I go to the crowd control option here, and say, right, I want to have a crowd control notification, but as only two people can be in there, I'm going to set it at three. So the second that we don't need to worry about vehicles, but the second um, that three or more people are in that space, I want to get that SMS alert coming through to me or that email alert with a clip, uh, an easy link to the footage so I can see it instantly. And then if, you know, if, if, if they understand, uh, I might actually have to go down there and tell people come on, you need to wait and wait your turn, wait until they get out. So that's that's applicable and that's available in all the products. And if we bring in better or, or more applications, that will come straight into the um to the to the management console, all inclusive. We don't a la carte anything. The other thing to do is think about motion detection. So am I going to get an SMS alert? You know, my cameras record things, which is great. It would have been really nice to have known that someone was in the office last night rather than just coming in the next morning and seeing it trashed. So you can set up different motion alerts and you can filter that by people, by vehicles. Um, you can filter it to different times of the day, different days, and you can keep adding different rules as long as you like. And then you can even set up either everything that this camera sees or different areas. So if this is your PPE cupboard, if this is your medical cabinet, if this is your server room and you don't mind people walking over to the vending machine, but you really, really don't want them coming over to this side, you can set that as a zone and look straight into it. And whilst I'm here, there's a couple of other things to talk about. We can set up privacy screens, more designed for outdoor cameras. So if you're if in the background you're picking up someone's residence, you can black it out completely. The other thing you can have is an audit log based on the camera, or it can be across the whole um, estate of cameras, so the whole management console. Um, the, the, the cameras themselves can be backed up purely to the cloud, so that's all footage being backed up to the cloud. Um, it's important to note about your bandwidth restrictions when you're doing something like that. And if we're looking at adding cameras, 
um, it's really quite easy. You're plugging them in over PoE, you're pointing them in the right direction, and then you can either add them per camera or per your entire order. So either putting in the serial number or scanning the code. It will come into a new camera bucket. I think we had one in here before. Yeah, a new camera. And this just needs to be a set, um, applied to the right site or right subsite. And once that's happened, it will inherit the rules of that site or subsite. Now, I think I'm gonna pass it over to AJ and see if there are any questions because you know from a very high level that's the Vicata solution. Um, I really encourage you to speak to your to your Beckler rep um, about getting a bit more granular looking at the exact sort of use cases that you might have within your organization and how the system might be helping you depending on you know what sort of function or stakeholder you hold um, how it could benefit the other people within your organization and we can really sit down and do a sort of one-to-one -one talk through of this of, of this solution our sensors our access control and see how it could benefit your your sort of estate or business requirements. AJ, any questions that have come through? Thank you, Trent. Um, there's a couple coming through. If, again, if there's any, if anyone wants to send them, um, please send uh, through in the chat function. Uh, there is one about installation, Trent. Do you, do you mind just yeah. talking around um, how easy that is and um, things to consider here? Yeah, so uh, obviously the cameras are connected over your IP network. So, um, you know, and uh, you, you're talking about a sort of simple, I would recommend a um, power over Ethernet switch or PoE switch. Um, we're then opening up uh, the two ports within out to the cloud, so 443 and 123. So 123 being the timing synchronization um, and 443 for the secure packages um, down from the cloud. So we're not sort of sending packages out apart from obviously the footage. Um, there are uh, a range of sort of install guides um, available from our knowledge base as well. But to be honest, we've we've done many rollouts, um, and I've not really heard a huge issue about the difficult difficulty of doing it. Um, I think the the real litmus test is the fact that I've deployed a camera at home, and it didn't take me that long. Thank you, Trent. And another one sent through. Um, can I use the existing cameras with this system? So they are currently all using Axis. Unfortunately, no. So um, if I sort of flip back to, to here, a part of the reason our solution is secure um, by design is because it is our hardware um, synced in with our software. Um, and the idea being that you choose a camera based on your requirements. Um, so your, your physical requirements, um, we've got a range of different models. Um, it syncs into our cloud cloud, and that's how you're enabled to get the automatic firmware updates. That's how you're enabled to get the automatic feature updates. Um, now that doesn't mean we can't sort of edge into an estate. So as your requirements change and you need two more cameras, the beauty of our solution is you don't have to buy an NVR. You don't have to replace everything at once. If you want to get two cameras and then expand over time, that's perfectly applicable. So we've got Elysium Healthcare is a great example. They deploy their cameras almost sort of five or eight at a time. They've been doing such for the last sort of 12 months. They've gone from four cameras through to almost 104 cameras. One thing to uh, mention there as well is if, if um, you were looking at transitioning, then there could be residual value on the existing cameras um, to, to, to recoup some of that initial investment. So and that's something we can always explore as well. Um, thank you. Trent for that. Um, there, there is a question around training and, and further product information. Um, could, could we list, if we split that out, Trent, um, what sort of training is required for, for IT staff um, to manage a, a, a solution like this? Um, so it, it really depends on, so the, the solution, it's sort of, there's no formal training. We have a made available a training center um, for for customers and partners alike. Um, now the idea behind the solution is for it to be intuitive. So it's to, to have that sort of familiar feel. And it's the idea is if you've used a cloud-based platform before, it should feel and look familiar. You should be able to click around. There is a help function, so an online chat available within the system. Um, and there is a training session in various videos so you can bring yourself up to speed and understand what's happening. Now, but everything is really designed with simplicity in mind and usability in mind. 
um, coming through. So there's no formal requirements around training. You should be able to sort of get yourself up and, and, use, and be usable quite quickly. Thanks, Trent. And the second part of that was around product information. Have you got a data sheet um, available for all, um, all the different cameras and we can share that across? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. So yes, um, I'll get that back to them for your um, your banker you. rep. As I said, we've got the compare page um, uh, available to you, um, as as long as other data sheets and, and different areas. So and really encourage you to sort of work with Beckler and the the Carter sales team about your individual requirements. Perfect. That is all the questions so far. Um, what, well, one thing I should mention, I did forget, I'm sorry, Asia, is um, the the products in regards to how they're licensed and sold. Obviously, you, you're choosing a camera. Each camera has a, has, a, has a sort of subscription license associated to it. Each camera, regardless of the, the amount of subscription license you hold, so we sell one, three, five, and 10-year licenses, but the cameras do come with a 10-year manufacturer's replacement warranty. So you know, the camera obviously needs the subscription license to, to work and operate, and that can be renewed either every year or every three years, every five years, but the hardware itself will be um, under warranty for 10 years. Thank you, Trent. There are a couple of questions. Um, so the, the question is, does Vicada have ANPR functions? Yeah, uh, yes. So license plate recognition was actually launched um, last week or week before last. So it's a, a license plate recognition. We've actually um, taken those cameras down. I think it was hit. They were hit by a car, actually. Um, uh, so you you have a dedicated um, car uh, camera. So uh, it's it's one of our bullet um, telephotos, and it will pick up the license plate. And then you have a, a an associated camera to that, being a sort of uh, environmental camera as well so yes we do um, hot off the press that is um, sort of shows and proves that we're continuously innovating and improving the solution perfect and the next question is was it mentioned it worked with an access control system Bob control etc yes we have our own access control system so you'll notice up in this I'm in the, the camera management or the command You'll see that I'm on the ca um, camera tab. I can actually link across to our access tab. So we've got, at the moment, we've got one four door controller um, coming through. So, and that will no doubt expand through. Um, and you can integrate and actually link the access control to the cameras. So if you're looking at our front door, you can link up to two cameras in the cloud and it's a full access control um, unit. So they're full AC units. Um, available to you so yes brilliant and our uh, next question is does mobile access have the same features as the desktop yes yes it definitely does so um our mobile our mobile um so i think the mobile app um has all the features and in fact i would encourage when you're sort of installing a camera to use the mobile app only because you'll be next to the camera and you'll be able to see straight away what that camera is looking at Brilliant. Thank you. If there's any other questions, please keep please keep sending them through. Um, but thanks, Trent, um, for for covering them off so far. No problem. I'm just uh, loaded up that um, the license plate recognition blog. So if that individual wants to get in contact with their Beckler rep, we can talk about um, what we launched last week as well. Perfect. And whilst we just wait for any other questions to come through, if I just and if you don't mind just going back to the presentation, I can explain what's coming up for you. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, yes, of course. Thank you, mate. That's okay. Brilliant. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, to finish off the year, um, we're going to go through a little bit more of a technical discussion around hyperconvergence, um, giving all the, the what, the why, the how around HCI um, and supported by VMware as well. So um, it's going to be a little bit more of a discussion, this one, um, getting a few of the sort of industry leaders to discuss what's going on in that area and how it can actually work or not work for your cloud strategy and, and putting plans in for 2021 as well. Um, so please sign up to that. If you want any more information on that, please let me know. Um, me and Trent uh, will stay on the 
phone for another five minutes uh, to, to finish off. So if there are any other questions around Ricarda, oh, and there, there is one just come through. Thank you, Beth. Um, uh, just to finish that sentence, if there are any other questions, please keep sending them across because we'll stay on for, for as long as needed. Um, but the question here is, how easy is it to combine footage for multiple cameras, Trent? Uh, so the so Sorry multiple to cameras you to go in and out there. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so let me sort of just give a demonstration. So if you're thinking multiple cameras, so I'm just going to dive into um, this camera. Um, and if you're talking live footage, by the way, um, you can go into our grids um, and you can set up a different grid. So, which is um, really quite straightforward. You go into a grid, you add a different grid, and then you can um, sort of add as many cameras as you like um, going in. So that's, that's and, and press done and you're off. If you're talking historic footage, so you're trying to find um, footage from the, from the past, um, you find, I suppose that first, the easiest way for me, this is the, my way of doing it is to, find that historic bit of footage so dive into that clip um i I, I typically look at pausing um what we're doing there so you can make it a bit quicker um if i type in london exterior you can add up to four cameras on any page so you'll see there that i've got four now that i'm able to expire at i don't know what i've added there so i'll add a different one um coming through hopefully that gives you a bit more of an understanding. And then once they've loaded up, you press play, and now I'm getting that same footage across all different um, views. You can see the cars driving past at different points. And then I can obviously fast forward and rewind to different points in the day. So the forward, the more forward I go, the more activity we're going to see as it's the streets of London. Ho hopefully that answers that question. Yes, it does. Thank you, Trent. Um, so yeah, so uh, thank you everyone for, for taking the time. Um, as I mentioned, we'll, we'll stay on for, for a few more minutes if there's any other questions, but um, if you have anything you want to explore further or you want to see a specific demo or see how this could work for your particular environment, then please let us know and we, we can set that up for you um, and we can do that separately in, on an individual basis as well. So yeah, thank you everyone and Trent, thank you very much for taking the time as well. We really appreciate that. No, no problem at all. Thank you.